is AI actually replacing us all or is it just me panicking at 3 a.m. again? So let's cut through the noise a little bit. Today, I wanna share my thoughts as a former data director and hiring manager on what the future of data analytics actually looks like for transitioning analysts in the age of AI. I also wanna share concrete examples of projects that I've worked on over the last 10 years and also give you some thoughts on what AI could and couldn't have done in those projects so you know exactly what skills to start focusing on so that you can stand out. At the end, I'm also gonna share some actionable tips on the platforms that you should be focusing on right now so that you can find out for yourself how AI is going to fit into the data analyst workflow. If you're new here, I'm Christine. I am a former data director and hiring manager who has helped almost 100 students along in their data journeys. And in this channel, I share the strategies and the frameworks that can accelerate your path to becoming a data analyst. So let's think about what AI is actually doing today. On the bright side, it's pretty good with technical guidance. It can help you write some initial code, it can help you debug your code, and it can also go back and forth with you and give suggestions on how to start a technical project. You can think of it like a digital intern that is sometimes a little bit too confident because AI hallucinations are real. It doesn't have a lot of accountability and oftentimes it will have wrong code and flawed logic and not surface the fact that it might be making a mistake. The other side of it is that AI cannot jump out of the computer screen and talk to stakeholders. Even if it can help you craft the story of what the numbers say, it cannot actually present that to other people and empathize with the needs of your stakeholders, gather requirements from real people and help people refine their goals given the company context. And privacy and security concerns make it really difficult for companies companies to just adopt AI in one fell swoop. Think about how many companies are still using Google Sheets for their main record keeping when we already have things like Excel and SQL databases. So human thinking is still gonna be essential here. AI does not know what kind of analysis to run or what kind of questions to ask. That is still all you. It is the difference between having knowledge, which is AI's domain, and having wisdom, which is you. So let's talk through three projects that I worked on over the last 10 years and chat through what AI could and couldn't have done in those projects so we understand where the boundary of AI stops and starts. When I was working as a lead data analyst at Vimeo, I was building a custom dashboard for the leadership team. This is a very common project that I think a lot of analysts will work on throughout their careers. So here I was using AI as a brainstorming buddy, but it was still the soft skills, the confident communication and being able to understand where each person in the leadership team was coming from when they were using this dashboard that helped me build a dashboard that was useful for everyone. And so when I was feeding that context into ChatGPT, I was the analyst who had to to ask the right questions to get that context in the first place. Right now, AI cannot replace the human touch where insights meets storytelling meets empathy with your stakeholders. When I was the director of financial analytics at Vimeo, I was the go-to person for something called revenue recognition, which is a calculation that is done at the end of every single month to basically calculate what is the company's revenue. And then that number gets released to the public. So it's kind of a project that is very high profile, let's say. And I was the go-to person between engineers, between the uh, people who were on product, between accountants and finance, and also between investor relations to make sure that all the pieces would come together correctly at the end of the month to calculate that one number. Throughout that project, I could have used AI to refine some of my writing in emails. I could have used it to ideate on process improvements and also to help me understand some of the logic behind these revenue calculations. But when we would get close to deadlines, for example, I was still the one who had to rally the troops, make sure that everyone was on the same page about what needed to be done, and also translate between product managers, engineers, accountants, and finance to make sure everyone understood what their role in the project was going to be. In this project, it was my understanding of how all the teams were connected to each other and how that translates to what actually needs to happen for the actual project that couldn't have been replaced by AI. This is a category that's commonly overlooked by early career data analysts, which is the idea of project management. I would say the best data analysts are not only people who understand the technical skills, they have the strong soft skills, but they also have their own frameworks for project management. When I was a data analyst at JustWorks, there was a metric that we needed to update. Let's call the metric returners. So it's basically people who come back to the platform within 30 days. And that metric definition was being updated to something like 60 days. Metric updates um, and code updates is something you will really commonly work on as a data analyst. Now, this is something where AI could have helped a lot. It could have found all the places in the code base where this definition in different ways was being implemented in code. But there were a lot of times where if I had 
I just blindly followed what AI told me to do, I would have made a lot of mistakes and broken things in the code base. And it also doesn't have what we call legacy knowledge. So that's like historical understanding of which scripts funnel down into what kind of reports and therefore who cares about these scripts and therefore who needs to be updated and communicated with if we're going to update these tables. I still need to have the context and do the last 10 to 15% of thinking to actually decide, okay, is this something that we should do? Is this right here? If we do change it, then how should we communicate that to the engineers, to the product managers, to the other analysts, and to all the stakeholders who care about the definition of this metric and this code? So this is the kind of work that AI could reasonably take over in the next few years, I would say. But to be honest, I would be like, okay, great. I would love if AI could take over this because I don't think a lot of data analysts wake up trying to do find and replace all day. The real value is in what comes next, which is updating all the correct people that this piece of the code has now been changed and making sure that it flows through correctly to all the reports and starting to ask the next question of, okay, now that we've updated this metric definition, how do we want to change the analyses that we've done in the past? So AI is going to save time on the grunt work, but it is not going to be able to ask the question, how does this actually help the business and what should we do next? All of this leads me to what I think is going to be the future of the data analyst role, which I think is going to be called something more along the lines of data product manager. If you notice in all three examples there, the strength of the human thinking, the human element was in understanding connections, understanding context, and then being able to communicate using that understanding. So being the middle person or the liaison between different teams while being equipped with an understanding of the ins and outs of the actual data, and then using tools like AI to do the actual implementation. So this also means that you need to shift away from being the manually minded analyst. There's a lot of other videos on YouTube that also talk about data analyst 1.0 versus data analyst 2.0. And generally I agree with that. Focus less on being the person who can just write the code and do the technical stuff and focus more on things like storytelling, effective stakeholder communication, negotiation, and project management. The data product manager is someone who can think critically about how all the pieces in a project can fit together using their understanding of what is available in the database and the ins and outs of the data that the company has. So let me jump into some actionable steps that you should take right now if you want to be able to stand out as a data analyst in the age of AI. This is a better time than any to start focusing more on those soft skills that go beyond just the technical tools and have more to do with project management, communication, storytelling, and having effective and confident communication no matter who you're talking to. And I'll give some tips on how to actually practice this in a second. I also want you to start thinking and reflecting on what are your specific experiences or personality traits or passions or domain knowledge that help you stand out aside from just the technical tools? Do you have specific understanding of business metrics? Do you have a higher than average empathy for stakeholders and clients because of a certain industry that you worked in? Do you find visualization and design especially fun? And can this help you stand out when you're building dashboards? I think the age of AI is going to push data analytics into a much more creative and strategic direction, which is I think really exciting because you don't want to be a SQL monkey all day. You want to be the person who can tell AI what SQL to write and then decide what to actually do with it. Start also integrating AI tools into your workflow. You can start small. It doesn't have to be super intimidating. You don't have to learn all the tools at once. I think you will find that if you know a little bit about one tool, you suddenly feel like you know a lot more about the scope of what AI can actually do right now. And so if you're working on a portfolio project, just take one project. And if you are designing a dashboard or exploring data, use Hex to to build the report or explore the data instead. Or if you are writing code, for example, use Copilot to guide the code and see how Copilot actually helps you decide on the right code to write. Or if you are just thinking and starting out with a new analysis, then use ChatGPT to brainstorm on what are all the approaches that you could take with this exploratory analysis. The goal here is just to familiarize yourself with the task so that one, AI becomes less intimidating, and then two, you also become more of that data product manager minded analyst who 
knows how to use the tools, but then it also can see how it makes the connections between the analysis, the numbers, and the actual insights and communication. And lastly, on the communication piece. Now, this is where ChatGPT, I think, is actually really good as a coach. And you don't have to use ChatGPT. You can use any of the other personal AIs as well. But I've used ChatGPT to also help me refine my own stakeholder communication. So you can feed it a prompt, something like, you are a senior executive at a tech company that I work at, and we're going back and forth, and you're asking me questions about why I decided to build a dashboard a certain way, what the key metrics mean, and um, what are the main insights that can garner from this dashboard. Can you go back and forth with me as if we're in conversation and uh, ask these questions to me and also help me refine my own responses? This is where it can be really helpful to role play in these different scenarios, like responding to tough feedback or having an interviewer ask you a bunch of different behavioral questions and actually practice that out loud using ChatGPT as that prompter. Overall, I think the more confident you are in your communication, your project management skills, and your ability to storytell with data and actually derive meaning from the actual numbers, the more confident you will be in your ability to use AI just like another tool in your toolkit. If this was helpful and you are hungry for more insights on working in data and you want to join me for a, an open Q&A where I just answer questions that you guys have been thinking about, about transitioning into the industry and what the industry looks like today, sign up for my newsletter below. I'm going to be sending invites out for that Q&A soon and we'll do that Q&A when we hit 15k subscribers. So make sure to hit that subscribe button and I will see you guys in the next video.